Good evening, 7.02 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm T Speak at 222 with the ISO headquarters, and I am simply astounded at the overwhelming support you've all shown me. We just hit 1,000 subscribers, and it's a bit overwhelming as our, not our last, but the video before the last had 3,800 views, and that was my first video I had done in several months. As some of you know, I have a partnered YouTube station, XRP Future Millionaire, with over 13,000 subscribers. Almost 13.5. This station I started with a dedication to the ISO and ISO only content. I believe very strongly in the ISO flip and the coins that go along with it, which are XRP, XLM, uh, XDC, Algo, IOTA, Quant, HBAR, ADA Cardano, amongst a few others. I have a passion for all things ISO, and this has been a great outlet, and the fact that 1,000 of you have subscribed is an absolute honor, and I hopefully can keep gaining your trust. So through the FinTech Times, this came out less than 13 hours ago, cross-border payments and compliance managing constant change, and expect updates daily, as now we're getting closer to the true flip even though, as you know, if you follow through the station, I don't believe 2022 is going to be the true flip in the United States of America. Go back to past videos to help catch you up. The development of a cross-border payments infrastructure has lagged that of domestic payments systems and is in need of modernization. The current limitations obviously rep or present challenges for banks and payments providers operating in the space, and while there is a widely recognized need and drive for transformation, this too brings the burden of enacting change. In this article, John Raymond, CEO of Identity, a firm focused on eliminating anti-money laundering, AML, and counter-terrorist financing, CTF, examines crime, regulation, and the shift to digital, the decline of correspondent banking services, and how the cross-border payments industry is at the start of a significant transformation with a number of drivers for change from the push for modernization and the increasing digital, digital expectations of individuals to the ever sharper scrutiny of regulations. But first, before we go into that, let me go and show you what cross-border payments are through a simple presentation. By 2022, with cross-border e-commerce increasing, it's important that businesses are able to accept payments from their customers across the globe. By 2022, it is estimated that cross-border shopping will amount to $630 billion and make up 20% of e-commerce sales. It is also set to expand its reach, spanning at least 29 countries over the regions of North America, Latin America, Europe, Asia Pacific, Africa, and the Middle East. If you are a merchant operating internationally, it is crucial that you are able to accept payments across all the countries that you are targeting. So, what are cross-border payments? Cross-border payments are transactions where the payer and the transaction recipient are based in separate countries. The transactions can be between individuals, companies, or banking institutions who are looking to transfer funds across territories. To accept cross-border payments, merchants will need to work with a payment service provider who can process a wide range of payment methods. eMerchant Pay is a payment service provider offering local and global payment methods. We can help you grow your business and attract customers across the globe. Credit and debit cards, bank transfers and local payment methods can all be used to make cross-border payments. Credit and debit cards are a go-to option for many consumers who are looking to make a cross-border payment as they simply enter their card details and wait for the transaction to be approved. International bank transfers are another way of placing cross-border payments. Consumers will need the merchant's IBAN and BIC to complete this type of transaction. Local payment methods such as e-wallets can also be used to facilitate international transactions. Customers like to pay in a way that is convenient and familiar to them. Therefore, it's worth researching preferred payment methods in the territories you are targeting. International payments normally take between two to five business days to clear. The more financial institutions that the payment has to pass through, the longer the transaction will take to clear. 
Soon, real-time cross-border payments will be adopted on a wider scale, with methods like Visa Direct and Swift GPI gaining popularity. Another feature coming soon that will make cross-border payments more efficient is secure customer authentication. Once implemented, payments made within the European Economic Area will have to go through a two-factor authentication process to verify the identity of the cardholder. Merchants should work with a payment service provider who offers timely payment processing, transparent fee structures, a secure global payment gateway, a range of local payment methods and settlement currencies. Looking to grow your business internationally? Get in touch with us today. So now that you know what cross-border payments are, let's read a little bit of this. Cross-border payments are an intrinsic part of today's global economy, increasing international trade. <clears throat> The expansion of supply chains, cross borders, and the new ease with which consumers can conduct global e-commerce are all contributing to a rise in international transactions. There are no official figures on the size of the international payments market, but Ernst & Young will reach 155.9 trillion in 2022, up from 128.8 trillion in 2018, demonstrating a strong upward trajectory. Business-to-business -business payments account for the ma vast majority of these transactions, but there is market is also impacting cross-border payment growth, with international consumer-to-consumer -consumer payments worth an estimated $800 billion in 2022. Yet behind this promising growth story, the cross-border payments market faces a number of challenges driven in part by significant changes in regulation, as well as difficulties in scaling underlining systems and process to meet today's demand. Cross-border payments, slow, expensive, and opaque. The modernization of the cross-border payments infrastructure has lagged that of domestic payment systems, new technology payments, or players aside. Much of the technology used in the industry is decades old and has been cobbled together over the years, making it slow and cumbersome. The current limitations obviously present challenges for banks and payments providers operating in the space. And while there is a widely recognized need to drive for transformation, this puts the burden of change on already stretched market participants. The issues confronting cross-border transactions were highlighted in 2020 by the G20 Group of Countries, which has since tasked the Financial Stability Board, FSB, with putting in place a roadmap for change. The FSB's effort, as well as cross-border projects from the Bank of International Settlement, BIS, are bringing impetus to the drive for transformation. Alongside this SWIFT is making strides to modernize its imminent global migration to the ISO 20022 <clears throat> messaging format because a case in point, new competitors are also emerging in a bid to challenge incumbent players by providing a much better customer experience with providers such as Wise and Ripple offering alternative value propositions. The high value business to business payment space traditionally dominated by SWIFT is a more complex area to tackle but here are two alternatives, such as MasterCard's cross-border services and Visa's Business to Business Connect are growing their share of the market. SWIFT works best with well-established payment corridors and currency pairs such as the U.S. to the Eurozone, typically settling the same day. However, for less well-traveled corridors, it is a different story. Transactions often have passed through a long change of intermediate ranks, which means they can take days to settle and incur notable fees along the way. The process is also opaque, and it is hard to move the know your customer KYC and know your transaction KYT information needed by each player with the payment, meaning banks often hold up payments while they check on data, making it difficult for customers to know when money will arrive at its destination. This is a key consideration as KYC slash KYT information is needed by each player in the payment chain and the local regulator in every jurisdiction through which it travels. Whoops. The decline of correspondent banking services. The challenges with today's cross-border payments infrastructure are further compounded by the recent decline in correspondent banking networks serving perceived high-risk markets. This decline has reduced the availability of cross-border payment services and driven up costs for end customers. The correspondent banking decline stems in part from large-scale de-risking exercises undertaken by some larger banks. The BIS estimates that between 2010 and 2020 alone, correspondent banking networks shrank by more than 20%. The high cost of compliance was a primary driver behind this trend with the inability to see nested accounts and trouble identifying the underlying customer leaving banks. 
unable to fulfill compliance requirements within their risk tolerance. While de-risking exercises make sense from an individual bank's perspective, it has left certain regions with much reduced correspondent banking services, severely hampering their ability to move money cross borders. Crime regulation and the shift to digital. These specific challenges facing cross-border payments are set against a backdrop of wider industry change. There has been an acceleration in digital adoption within financial services as individuals became more accustomed to digital products and services. The pressure is on financial institutions worldwide to up their digital game. Accompanying this increase in digital activity is an unwanted increase in cybercrime. The UK's National Fraud and Intelligence Bureau reported a threefold increase in cybercrime. In the first half of 2021, compared to the previous year, as a result, fraud and security are high on the agenda as banks and financial institutions fight back against cyber criminals. Lastly, there are also ongoing regulation compliance challenges to deal with new and updated regulations re- related to the AML and counterterrorism financing continue to come into force. With examples including the 6th Anti-Monetary Laundering Directive, AMLD, and the Euro's Union and updates to reporting formats due to ISO 20022 happening in many jurisdictions. Regulatory scrutiny is also sharper than ever with a bumpy, with a bumper level of fines and enforcement actions issued for non-compliance with financial crime reporting regulations in 2020. ISO 20022 is only at the start of a transformation. ISO 20022 marked the start of a significant transformation within the cross-border payments industry without modernization occurring at a wider level across technological systems. The risk of exorbitant costs and an inability to meet customer demand grows. The key for financial institutions will be to align with changing regulations while also managing internal uplift projects. Although difficult to manage, both elements are necessary to ensure systems can handle the increasing volumes of data in the cross-border payments environment. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you want more content, and share this with your friends and family so that we can get more people on board with the new flip of the switch, ISO 2022 framework, and the compliant coins that go along with it.